gentlemen, boys and girls, species around the multiverse. Welcome to Geek Syndicate episode 314. We are doing what we always do. What is that? I hear you ask. We are bringing a sass back to geekdom. I am Mons, and with me as always is... Toss a coin to your witcher. Oh, listener of plenty. Oh, listener uh, uh, of plenty. I'm just going to stop you there. Yeah. Stop you there. Yeah, because every time I turn on the internet, and not even <laughs> Facebook, I'm saying the internet, yeah... <laughs> I see someone talking about tossing a coin to the Witcher, and I'm missing something. So you've not seen the Witcher, have you? I've seen the first episode. Yes, the second episode, man. It's all about the second episode. Okay, so you can't even tell me nothing. Would would, would you be silly? I don't want you to spoil anything. All I will say is, the Witcher um, teams up with a bard. Okay. And the bard composes a tune. Okay. And that's the taking, tune the, is, taking the internet by storm. Yeah, toss a coin to Witcher. And the thing is, right, once, um, and maybe I've heard it so many times now that it's kind of, it, it doesn't have the same level of effect that it did when I first heard it. But you know me, right? You know I love my music. And I think the problem was when it, when it, come, when it drops in the show and then they kind of drop a little or- orchestral backing when he's singing, I'm like, you know what? I'm all, I don't even care if this show is rubbish from here or out. I'm all over this show. It was okay. just the way it was just the way they dropped it. It's just because I wasn't. I think the thing was I was I, I was enjoying the show, but I wasn't expecting it. I just when he started singing, I just wasn't expecting where it was gonna go, and I was like, yeah. And I think hearing it out of context doesn't drop in the same way. Okay. Because a lot of the things online are kind of covers. It's not the actual... People, people have done covers. They, they, mate, mate, they're like... There are plenty is of it, covers. Is that good? It's not that... You need to watch the second episode. All That's right. all I can say. Because I think, like I said, if you listen to it out of context, I think you'd be like, yeah, okay. But it's just in the context of the, and the way he kind of develops it. And then obviously, and it comes back in a little bit later, you know what I mean? Because he's basically he's trying to, he's basically the witch's hype man. Yeah, that's the best way to put is it. Is it like the time when um, Batman teamed up with the vigilante and Batman's like, now nah, I've got this? So the vigilante just yes. kicks back with a guitar, and sang yes. a song about the yes, <laughs> the blue and, blue and gray, blue and gray. Yes, yes, spot on. That is it. That is okay. it. What's, that's All it. Right. What was that? Batman the Brave and the Bold. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh man! <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna have to go, I'm gonna have to go listen to that now because that was tough. <laughs> I forgot about that, man. Oh. Wow, blue and grey. I can't remember the words, yeah, I can't, man. I can't was, remember the. I just was, remember that was it that was great. Cheap. It was. It was. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Back in the room, keep back in the room. Um, yeah, I just want to give a shout out to Shah, Charlene, um, uh, long time listener, long time friend, long time part of the GS team. Uh, was in uh, London this week and just hooked up with her the other night. It was just really nice to see her. So, big love. Oh, was she? Oh, wow, yeah, yeah. Hey, Shah. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> Could have given it a bit more energy, really, is what I was thinking. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah, that's all I got. Sorry. <laughs> Could have wow. given it a bit more energy. Damn. What do you mean, man? That was energetic. Yeah, all right. Let's move on before you embarrass okay. yourself. Wow. <laughs> Damn, it's like that, is it? It's like that. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Right, so moving on um, I'm really looking forward to talking about the news Because I know Barry's got something coming And I don't know what it is, but I'm keen So it's time for the news Right, the news is Yeah, yeah, yeah Well actually, I've got two pieces of news I'm going to start with a positive I'm going to start with a positive So the positive news is um, And I've got to thank uh Dan Marshall, if he's listening, because um, I had no idea. So, About life in general, or nope. Yeah, well, there is that, but Kingdom. <laughs> so, Kingdom 
if you're long time listeners, you remember that they watched it first. This was the show which was effectively Walking Dead meets Korean medieval period drama. There you go. There you go. Um, I then watched it and I was like, this this is one of the best shows I've ever seen. I, I just I just love that show. So good. So um, good. Not what you expected. At all. Not what I expected whatsoever. And it's just a fantastic show. See, Tell me it's, it's back. back. It's back. Hi. Not only is it not only is it back, it's back this month. It's back this month, mate. Oh man, everything else is going on hold. <laughs> and you know what? I got um I got Sabrina, I got Altered Carbon, I got the boys man, all I've kind got, of on the go. I got a list I can't even Yeah, I know, but you know I've, what? I've got two separate lists. I've got the list that I watch on my on my own. And I've got the list I watch with my wife. Yeah. Like, and the list with my wife, that one moves slowly. Yeah, yeah. And I just, I just can't. Oh. Yeah. But you know what? That whole, that emergency rip cord's getting pulled, man. Because everything yeah. is, everything's stopping. Because Kim. I think, I don't know how long it is. I think the first season was like six episodes. Was it? Was just, that it was, was it, wasn't it? Something like that. I don't, and I don't know how many episodes season two is going to be. And there's a trailer for it. I haven't watched a trailer yet. Um, I've well, realized. I mean, do you know what I mean? When we started watching stuff, we were talking like 22, 23 episodes as yeah. standard, and I ain't got time in my life for that now. And so, when someone says oh, six episodes, I'm like, I'm all good with that. Don't you wish there was more? I said, uh, you could give me more, but I, there's so much else to watch, man. And recently, I watched. Um, I'll come on to it, actually. We'll talk about it in uh, week that was. Mm. But yeah, so that was that was the positive news. Uh, Kingdom is coming back next week can't wait the less positive news that i'm pissed about is uh so this disney um right the way you say that man have, oh, have, have dropped dropped the the new trailer because they put a trailer out last year for the um film long awaited film adaptation of artemis fowl ah yeah well oh, great books man so have you read the books? Yeah, I read the, the first two or three. I think okay, I read the okay. first two a while back now. Loved yeah. them. Absolutely loved them. So for people who don't know, the blurb for Artemis Fowl, which kind of covers the whole thing, is Artemis Fowl is a 12-year-old genius and descendant of a long line of criminal masterminds. He soon finds himself in an epic battle against a race of powerful underground theories who may be behind his father's disappearance. That's the blurb for the film. Yeah. Um, that is should not be the blurb for the book. So the thing was, when they released the trailer last, this was supposed to come out last year, and they dropped the trailer for it, and I saw the trailer, and I thought, okay, yeah, yeah, it looks worthy, looks worthy. Um, didn't really show a lot. It was very teasery. And then the film just disappeared. And the rumours were loads of reshoots, loads of kind of recuts and blah, blah, blah. And then... Um, this next trailer dropped yesterday and apparently I think it dropped like in the middle of the night, which probably says a lot. And I watched it yesterday evening and I, I, I genuinely, and I'm saying it's hand in the heart, have never been so disappointed in a trailer for an adaptation. Really? Never. How can you get, how can you get this wrong? It is like, I mean, it's a story that's begging to be like made into a film. So my thing is right. That's what I mean. My thing is, I always remember picking up the first Artemis Fowl book and just reading the blurb in it, and literally it started off by saying Artemis Fowl was a twelve-year-old criminal mastermind. I'm like, I'm in. I, I'm just take. I'm in. And the way that book was structured, it was just. And he was. There's was, there's no other way to put it. In that first book, he was the villain. Yeah, absolutely. He was the villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you could make the arguments of why he was doing it, but he was the villain. And Holly Short, who kind of was, um, she was a fairy. Yeah. Uh, he worked for like a kind of fairy police force or whatever. She was the heroine. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And then the, the whole course of the book series is almost like, how can you stop a young, a potential Bond villain from becoming a Bond villain, a full-on yeah, Bond. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's almost like the course of his arc, you know, and it's a good arc. And this, you know, I've read all the books; they're fantastic. In the trailer, it 
basically it's flipped on its head. So he's kind of almost, he descended from his dad is like, he protects artifacts or something. I don't know. I, I just got, I was just, I was so angry of like, what the heck is this? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I kind of tuned out. And in the books, you don't even see his dad in the first book because his dad's disappeared. And that's that. that yeah, was, no, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, the dad had disappeared, and that was, and Artemis was kind of, and his mum was kind of, she wasn't like in a coma, but she was just, the dad's disappearance had really messed with her head, and she yeah. just was not really in the picture. You know, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to like spoil people that are going to read the books. Um, but the dad was not in that book. It was yeah. all about Artemis, and he was kind of pulling all this shady stuff under the radar of his mum with Butler, who was backing him up. But it was clearly Artemis was the one who was running the show. Yeah. It was in the film. It's all this nonsense with Butler coming to him and going, oh, your your dad was a long line of people who protected the the earth from, the, you know, kept all these artifacts safe. And now you must embrace your destiny. And then literally the, the thing opens up and then there's a um, there's a suit for him to wear and like glasses like he's a man in black. Like, what, 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 like he's a man in black. And again, in the books, my boy was always well dressed and turned out because he was a criminal genius. That's how he rolled. He was always the smartest boy. He was. He wasn't even the smartest kid in the room. He was the smartest person in the, whatever room he stepped into. Yeah, he was already five steps ahead of you. Where they make out this kid's like he's clever in the rest of it, but he's like quite. I know it sounds silly, but he's quite young for me to compare to the Artemis foul dick that comes across in the book. It's awful, man. Awful. Awful. I, I I don't even know I've wasted that much time trying to explain why I find it so awful. Because... So I've just done I've just done a little search. The first thing I've come up with is, is book fa- uh, Artemis foul trailer, book fans prepare to be enraged. Artemis foul movies facing fan backlash. Here's why. It's just... Oh, that's the other thing. There's a there's a bit in oh, the... But tra- it, says, it says, what's his name? I can never... Uh, Ian Colfer supports the big changes in the movie and the thing is at the end of the day and i have to say this as a writer that that's his story Mm. ain't my story i'm a reader of it but that's his story now if he's happy with it fair play to you dude i'm not (laughs) (laughs) do you know what i mean i can't i'm not i can't change that i can't i can't change that you know at the end of the day same thing. If someone did a film version of Fallen Heroes, it came out and you came to me and you were like, B, I don't want to be funny, B, man, but this looks shit. Yeah. Right. And I said to you, yeah, but once, man, I'm happy with it. You'd be like, okay. Still looks shit. It still looks shit, but I'm, but I'm glad you're happy. But I'm yeah, glad yeah. you're happy with it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of how I feel about this. I'm glad, I am genuinely glad that he's happy with it and doesn't feel like he's been ripped off. As a reader, I'm not happy with it. I feel ripped off. I feel like, how hard is it to just stick to the book? It, 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 do you know what I mean? Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it literally feels like a film done by committee where someone sat in a room and they've gone, I don't know, this idea of making him a 12-year-old criminal mastermind, I, I don't know, I'm not happy with that. Maybe we could workshop it a little bit and change it around a little bit and... It just, Holly Short, like I said, in the first book, well, first few books, her and Artemis were kind of, um, you know, protagonists, antagonists who kind of came together for the common good in most of the stories. Mm-hmm. And then over the course of it, they can, they, they'd be reluctantly sort of became friends or whatever. Whereas in this one, she introduces herself as, I'm Holly Short, I'm... I'm I'm your ally on the, on, the outs- on the inside or something. I don't know what she says. And I'm like, what the hell? Okay. That was the core of the first book. Yep, I remember that. It's the core of the first book. And it was all a lot of it was focused on Holly because she was the first sort of female sort of elf. I don't know once, man. I could go on, but you know, I'm I'm just tired. Yeah. <laughs> I, could, I feel you, man. I feel I just, you. I, and people can say what they want. They can say, Oh, well, he's just a kid's book, you know, they're just kids' books. Why are you getting so upset and blah blah? I'll get upset, A, because I'm a writer and I love books and I really loved that book series. Personally, I, I preferred that book series to Harry Potter and I'm not, 
I suppose no, now I'm, I've, I've walked down that road like I'm comparing them, but I suppose what I mean is I've they read came, both. They came out around the same time yeah. and they both featured young people. Yeah. So there, it's, it's kind of hard not to. You know, but I don't know. I just, uh, there was just something about the Artemis Fowl books that I, I, I just loved. And I feel looking at that trailer, I just feel that they've, they've just taken the core out of it. What What was special about it, I feel they've just turned it into like a generic it, it looks like it looks like spy kids meets men in black now you know i was just looking i was just i was literally just thinking that yeah it just yeah it looks it looks like spy kids now and i'm just like you know what well, yeah whatever you know i take it, i take it you're not going to see it in the cinema nope i, I can't even say i'll even end up ever seeing it unless someone actually so when you know that you trust yeah. that that yeah. knows the score, yeah, yeah, comes back and says, "You know what? Don't let the trailer. It's actually it was actually really good." I'll be like, "Okay, who's read the?" Yeah, but the thing is, this is a different response because there's people saying there's other people that are saying they really enjoyed it who haven't read the book, so they're like, you know, just chill out. So I kind of get that as well because I've been in that situation before. But I just think this whole thing sometimes with adaptations is nine times out of ten. When you follow the source material closely, I'm not saying that things won't change. They change stuff in Lord of the Rings, do you know what I mean? I'm not saying you can't change stuff, but when you also look at Lord of the Rings, 90% of Lord of the Rings was spot on. Yeah, and even if it's not spot on, it's true to the spirit of it. Exactly, exactly. And that's, you know, whatever else you change, you change that and you're in trouble. Yeah. You know, say what you want about the Harry Potter, you know, the Harry Potter films or whatever, but we you could you know, but they were true to the spirit yeah, of the books. Absolutely. You know, this to me doesn't feel true to the spirit of the books. Mm. That, that's my that's my hot take on it. Wow. Well so. let's 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 leave that behind. <laughs> Give you a chance to calm down. <laughs> Just, Man, so I'll mm, tell you let me tell you what step I, away actually, from the... I actually stopped the trailer. I stopped the trailer and it took me about an hour before I went back to finish watching it. Because wow. I got I, I got about a minute in and I went, what the heck is this nonsense? I just turned it off. I was like, nah, man. Nah, that's wrong. <laughs> stopped, stomped around, cast a few people. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> went back an hour later and re- <laughs> cast a few people. <laughs> you know I mean? to get the anger out. <laughs> do you know <laughs> <sighs> Seriously, after after this, take the time to go watch the trailer once you see what I mean. You will see what I mean. All right then, all right, I'm prepared myself. Okay, all right, all right. Let's leave it behind. All right, move on, move on. Let's then. move it on. With <laughs> let's just talk. <laughs> we'll have a brief look at the week that was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, all the talk, Doctor Who. But not the Doctor Who everyone's thinking about. Um, I've been listening to some Big Finish audio. Oh, yeah, you mentioned this on WhatsApp. Yeah. So they did a series called The War Doctor, which was starring um, uh, John Hurt. And literally must have been one of the last few things he did before he died. Yeah, which was tough. That, that which, was a tough uh, I'm listening to And I remember listening to The Last Adventure going, I'm listening to a dead man now. Because yeah. when I started listening, he was alive. When I got to the end, he was dead. And it was just like, and it was like, these, they're brilliant. They are great. It's really, um, I don't know, it was really hard. They were so good. And I was like, there's life, there's, there's life in this series. But, you know, it's done now. No yeah. one else, no one else can take that because no one else has got John Hurt's voice. You know what I mean? No yeah, one else yeah. could even come close to that. So when I saw that they had the War Master, and I'm like, that's Derek Jacobi. We're talking yeah. old school classical actor, man. Um, man's got gravitas, and I was like, "Are oh, you war master? I'll, I'll give it a go." I'm not usually one for getting books or comics or stuff that focuses on the villain. For some reason, they don't usually work for me. Yeah, uh, no, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of a similar vein to you, to be fair. I like a good villain, but I want to, I want to root for the good guy. I want it's deep in me, yeah. man, and I just want to. I don't want to be celebrating the bad guys, even. So anyway, I thought I'd give it a go. So I listened to the first one. I, mean, I found it a bit hard to get into, but mm-hmm. it was good. And right at the very end, something happens. And I was like, oh, my God, this guy is evil. Because you kind of got 
because like how do you write a bad guy he's got you kind of it's really hard to write a bad guy without showing some kind of redeeming features yeah and it's kind of moving that way and then you get to the end and you go oh uh, it did this guy's got no redemptive qualities full stop <laughs> i mean full stop and you get to that bit where you had the master in the old days who's kind of like classic villain often like <laughs> A type classic villain. Yeah, yeah. And then you come to new Doctor Who, and of course everyone's got to go a little bit crazy, a little bit mad, and got to make the funny eyes, all of that. Yeah. So, you know, John Sims is a great master, but he's all like a bit mad, a bit ha ha ha. Oh, okay. Oh, which is how they seem to be doing the Doctor a lot lately. Funny enough. Then Missy, and she was a bit. Oh, I'm a bit crazy. <laughs> and um, now you've got the new guy who I love. I think he's the best master from New yeah. Who. But he's still doing that I'm a bit crazy thing. Whereas the old days, the master was just wrong. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he, he, was, weren't, yeah. he weren't crazy. He was just no. evil. So anyway, I'll get into the second adventure in this in, in, in this War Master series. Yeah. And it's an odd one because this adventure is slow. There's no action. Yeah. Uh, but as it's going on, you suddenly start to realise what he's... And he ain't in it much. That's the killer. He ain't in it much. But you suddenly start to realise what he's doing. And when you get to the end, you, I was just sitting there. I was just, I was on the train listening to it. And I was sitting there, I was literally gripping the handrest. And I was just sitting there, my mouth open going, this is a scale of evil I hadn't even considered. <laughs> <laughs> it was so big it was such an epic and i was like yeah you know the master's a bad egg do you know what i mean you know that but, this, <laughs> but if you were ever ever in any doubt that the master is wrong on a very fundamental level you gotta go listen to that audio i've still got the third one to come right yeah but you gotta listen i was just like i, I couldn't believe it I, it took me a while to get my head around what he'd done <laughs> So I'm like, yeah. So I, I don't know. All I'm saying is the War Master. <sighs> wow. Wow. Okay. All over that. Yeah. Big, so I was going to say, I was going to talk to Doctor Who, but it's not Doctor Who. It's the Master. Doctor Who don't even get a look in. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That's my recommendation. Get on okay. that, folks. Get on that. Um. So on it's on channel f- i think it's on channel four i watched it on all four anyway and it's a cartoon series i want to say it's five parts i've only seen three parts reasons which will be explained soon and that's primal have you heard of this rings a bell but i don't know it so primal is it's kind of is what it's set, set it is what it says on the tin really it's set back in prehistoric times I want to say a caveman teams up with a dinosaur and hilarity ensues, but it's not. <laughs> I mean, you know, one part, one half of that is right. A caveman teams up with a dinosaur and it's just grimness to the extreme ensues. But what I need to, uh, what I've been saving up to say is this is done by, I can never say the person's name, so I'm not going to try, but it's done by the creator of Samurai Jack. Oh, that's what I've heard about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. All you had to do say was Samuel and Jack, and I'm like, yeah, I'll check that out. Yeah, I know. But so I was, <laughs> I'd got home from work. I was just chilling out, pour myself a glass of wine. I was like, yeah, what can I watch? And then I saw it. They've dropped it on Channel Four or Four. I was like, oh, great, Primal, yeah. I put the episode on once. I watched the first episode, and like, my mouth was just open. What do you mean? Cartoon, yeah. It don't matter. <laughs> cause, cause that shit was grim. Don't yeah. get me wrong. It was good. As in, you know, like Samurai Jack, I mean, you know, the animation was amazing and it was, you know, stunning to look at. And there's a lot, it gave you a lot to think about and stuff. But what it told me was, right. I'm quite happy living in the 21st century. At no point do I ever want to live in prehistoric times because, man, 
<laughs> There's just no let up mods. Okay. There's no let up in that show. It was just grim. It was grim. And given the fact it starts with a man fish, it starts with a man fishing. And I guess that don't go very well. He, he fishes to eat. Basically, he fishes twice in that first episode. If you ain't in tears the second time he goes fishing, and that ain't tears what? of joy, then that? you're you're dead inside, man. You're, you're dead inside. Okay, I am. And that, and then when you meet the dinosaur and you get the dinosaur's backstory, and then how the two of them kind of come together, you're just like, oh, just. So I watched the three episodes back to back, and I went enough. <laughs> how, how long are they? Twenty minutes. It's a standard cartoon like months. I, you know I, mean? I, I am. I am fascinated by what you're telling me. You know what it reminded you, you know what it reminded me of? The main guy who you remember there was a cartoon way back in the day called Fire and Ice, which was done by the same dude who did Lord of the Rings cut the Lord of the Rings yeah, cartoon. Yeah, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. He looks a little bit like the main dude in that he was, Ah, Jendi Tartakovsky. Yeah. Yeah, that's the creator. But yeah, the main sort of primal guy mm. in that reminds me of like the sort of main one of the main heroes in Fire and Ice. He was the okay. guy we kind of dubbed prehistoric Batman because he had a kind of cowl and stuff and he had yeah, a big yeah, axe yeah. and whatever. But uh, yeah, it's just brutal. And, you know, to put too fine a point in it, primal. It's just, they go hunting the two of them. They basically take down a woolly mammoth. <sighs> That's when I went, you know what? I need a break, man. I can't, I just, I can't. <laughs> I just can't do any more right now. Well, I mean, do, I have to ask: Do I want to watch this? It's a really good show. I mean, it is. I mean, it is good. I mean, it's the guy who did Samurai Jack, so it's got that kind of tone to it as well, you know. And there are there are some comedic moments. I mean, you got you got to, you got to search for them, but there are some. Comedic <laughs> moments. <laughs> All right, look, so I found I found a, cus- uh, a, a watch a review. Just these first five episodes were more thrilling, engaging, captivating, and fulfilling than anything I've seen at the cinema this year. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily go. I mean, the shows. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. But I mean, it. Yeah, I mean, it is. It, it's edgy your seat stuff. You know, uh, the guy. He, A good definition knows, of show. Don't tell. Yeah, yeah. Because the other thing is as well is there's no talking in it. Right. Okay. It's one of those. Yeah. He's got to talk to a dinosaur. Yeah, yeah. What is it? Yeah, funny. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. I'm on that. I'm yeah, like, it's yeah, it's it's. Oh, does, the, does the all four app let you download? I might be able to download it and watch it on my journey. Uh, possibly. Check it out. I'll check it possibly. out. Possibly give it give it a look see. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. So that's that's mine. Ooh. All right. I feel we should move on, right? I think we should move on. Should we? Should we move on to the main? Okay. Um, oh no, I do think I need to mention one TV show. Okay. It's called El Vincino. It's on. Um, it's on Netflix, and it's a Spanish show. It's a half hour, one of the half hour jobby. Um, I think it's billed as a comedy, which it is. I'm just trying to get it up. One sec. Yeah. It, it, which it is, but it's one of them ones where you go, I don't know, the, the, the comedy takes second place to the story and what's going on. But right. it, no, it's not. It doesn't take second place. It's just so interwoven in it that it's there are bits where I laughed out loud, but you don't spend the time doing that. You do spend the time laughing because it's just part and parcel of what's going on. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it's a Spanish superhero comedy web television series. That's oh, it's, cool. oh, it's based on a comic. El Vincino, the the um translation is the neighbor. Okay. Um, and it's about it's about some dude and his girlfriend. This dude is not a he's not a great guy. He's not a great guy. And his girlfriend basically has enough and they kind of like go on one last trip to try and sort it out. It doesn't happen, and this thing crashes and they kind of pass out. And this guy in a strange costume comes out and gives him power and like goes Ooh. And like the next day he wakes up and just slowly finds out that he's got powers. Oh, it's not slowly. Guy leaves him a hologram. <laughs> <laughs> Telling him, I'm the guardian of this sector of the galaxy. I've passed my powers on to you. Use them well. Which, of course, 
you know, it's the day he tries to fly and he, he crash lands through his neighbor's window and that's the cut <laughs> so he and this guy are like become kind of friends is a bit stretching the term right but he needs someone to help him like figure out what's going on and um and his girl his girlfriend's a reporter and is assigned to find out who the new costumed guy is and so on and so on and i've just really enjoyed it i really enjoyed it it's only 10 episodes which is good and i think i did three in one sitting uh yeah oh, okay so give it a try no yeah I'll, yeah i quite i quite like the sound of that one yeah he's a bit i'm not saying the, the, the main character is not a nice guy he's just a bit of a waster <laughs> <laughs> okay because when are you gonna do something oh, i'm just waiting until my t-shirt business kicks off <laughs> it's like, <laughs> he's got really shit t-shirts <laughs> so yeah here you go and it, i don't know i seem to be like i need i need a short one in my life at all times yeah yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I completely agree. That's just a bit easier to watch. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's time for our main segment. What, what do we call our main segment? Do we just call it the main? Have we got a better yeah. name? Uh, no. All this time. <laughs> no, <that's... laughs> all, this, all this time. Right. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> wow, minimum effort coming in. Um, <laughs> it's time for our main so what we do on a regular, and by regular, I mean like once a year, um, we just uh, have a... Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was just so random thing online where someone's put an image where it's got... It's got... Where's he got? He's, got the, he's got the... He's got the bridge of the Enterprise, and he's got... You know, they've got the, obviously the main viewing screen. Yeah. And he's got Wesley Crusher on the screen. And underneath it, he's got Wesley Crusher, the Jar Jar Briggs of the Star Trek universe. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, sorry, back in the room. Okay. <laughs> right, glad. Okay. <laughs> glad that was good for you. So on a regular, and by regular, I mean once a year, we have a look at the upcoming pilots that the various networks, and by this we actually talk about American networks, because... It always seems really harder to find out what's coming up on the English networks, but there yeah. You go. Um, <clears throat> so I've got a list of all the pilots that are coming up. Uh, I've had a quick look at them. Barry hasn't. I run by Barry the ones I think <laughs> might be worth a quick look at, um, and uh, we get his reaction. So are you ready? We're going to start with the network ABC. Now, da 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 da. It's not. It's not much going on here. I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. No. All right. So the first one we're talking about is The Brides, produced by Greg Berlanti, who seems to produce everything. Yeah. Uh, right. <clears throat> I'm interested in, <laughs> in your tone of voice when I say the first sentence. OK. A sexy contemporary reimagining of Dracula. OK. A family drama with a trio of powerful female leads at its heart. With strong horror elements, The Brides is a vampire soap about empowered immortal women and the things they do to maintain wealth, prestige, legacy and their non-traditional family. Yeah, well, I actually heard about this one today. Also, I should mention the one member of cast I mentioned is Gina Torres. Yeah. <coughs> who I love. Yeah. That that was the only reason why I was prepared to sort of go, mm, I'll, give that, I'll, I'll give the pilot a go. So, so we got we got thumbs up, we've got thumbs down, and we've got yep. thumbs in the middle, and it can waver a bit. So it sounds to oh, me like a wavering middle thumb. It's a wavering middle thumb. It's not up or down, to be honest. I just also as well, I kind of feel like vampires are kind of played out a bit for me now. Did you, you see the mean? BBC's Dracula? Yes, I uh, talked about it, didn't we? Yeah, to be fair, yeah. I did enjoy that. But yeah, I don't know. I just. I, I think it's because you, they put the term, I've just heard the word soap, and that's all I could hear. Also, sexy contemporary reimagining I know, it doesn't just, do much for me. No, it's just, it doesn't need. How many times are you going to reimagine it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to CBS now. That was all ABC had to offer. <laughs> wow. I'm times t- have changed, didn't it? I, I'm telling you. Uh, so, right. Um, yeah, so CBS ain't doing great either. Oh, classic. <clears throat> a reimagining of the classic... T- you tell me. You tell me when you... <laughs> why, are you why are you making that noise? No, it's just because the first thing you said was re- reimagine it. I was like, oh my God. Not again. Uh, tell me if you recognise what it is before okay. I get to the end. 
Okay. A reimagining of the classic series in which an enigmatic figure uses her extensive skills to help those with nowhere else to run. This is the equaliser, isn't it? It's the equaliser starring Queen Latifah as the equaliser. I just I don't understand. Especially if you've got a movie coming out. Well no, they they had two movies. they've done two movies. Oh, did I miss the second one? Yeah, you <laughs> Yeah, mate, the second movie came out a couple of years ago. Oh, I was like, I was looking forward to that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they have to look forward to it. You can go and watch it now. Guess I won't be catching it in the cinema. (laughs) Nope. Uh, It might even be on one of the streaming ones. I don't know. Um, It was all, it was good. I still preferred the first one. but um, And also, the guys who do uh, Bags of Action podcasts, also on the GS Network, um, did a really good review of uh, Equalizer 2 to the point of it's made me want to go back and watch it because I think I didn't give it as mm. I, I gave it a bit of a hard time because I was comparing it too much to the first one but my I, so, uh, I one of my stu- I, what I get my, my active students to do every Saturday is just to bring in a clip and say this is my favourite piece of acting and tell me why so I can relate it to what they're learning and um, this week one of the girls brought in a clip from the first Equalizer movie and I was like it's like that made me want to go back and watch the first one because I was like, okay. damn, that was tense. Yeah, that's a good film. Man. But so you're not feeling this? To be honest, I think Queen Latifah is quite hardcore. So okay, but my my thing was is like you've already rebooted the Equalizer for film, mm. and you took a show where originally you had an old white dude. Edward Woodward and that, and I love the Equalizer TV show. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But you took that and you put Denzel Washington in that role, and he nailed it twice. So, for me, if you're then gonna go and do an Equalizer TV series, I would try to dovetail it into the film. So I would have cast a black guy. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To try and sort of dovetail it into the film. You're just confusing it again by then. You're basically rebooting it again by now saying you're going to cast a woman. So I'm just a bit confused. It's not to say it's going to, be, you know, it still could be great because, like I said, I, can't, I like Queen Latifah. I think she could, she could. Well, it's one of those her. things. It's like, oh, how does this connect to the TV show? How does this connect to yeah. the movie? Oh, it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. But they were quite recent. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, and that's what. I think it would have been different if they hadn't had the Denzel films. Mm. That's kind of where I'm coming from. It just seems a strange route to go down. Um, Because obviously she's not going to be called Robert McCall. She's called Dana something. Not not McCall? No. Uh, I scroll down. Let me go back up. Dana Owens. That's not the equaliser then. No, because it's Nicholas and McCall. (laughs) (laughs) I don't understand. Let's move on. Oh, it was bad all over again. Let's move on. Here's something else produced by Greg Berlanti. Okay. (laughs) Um, So, this is a classic (laughs) reimagining. No, you're you're winding me up now, aren't you? Those are my words. Oh, okay. (laughs) But it's it's, it's called Kung Fu. Oh. Love a quarter life crisis causes a young Chinese American woman to drop out of college and go on a life changing journey to an isolated monastery in China. But when she returns to find her hometown overrun with crime and corruption, suddenly she uses her martial arts skills that she learned for two minutes and Shaolin values to protect her community and bring criminals to justice, all while searching for the assassin who killed her Shaolin mentor and is now targeting her. Wow, that's a that's a big to do list. That's how it's <laughs> that's a lot to juggle, man. I mean, that that's. I've got to say, off the off the top of it, if you hadn't put Kung Fu in the title, I would I'd be giving that a see, thumbs up. See, my thing is, I can't remember. I remember loving Kung Fu as a kid. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the premise of it, and I, so I can't tell you how close it is to to this um so it I, I can't work out if it's a reimagining or not but it's kind of got the same name as something that you know that existed before so you go is it i don't know i'm a bit again i'm a bit confused as to what just, what it is where it's coming from you know what yeah. call it make it its own make it its own thing because all you had to do to me was say shaolin 
<laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Shaolin, it's, I'm in. <laughs> I mean, or, you know, daughter of Shaolin. I'm like, I'm there. Ah, daughter of Shaolin. How hard is it, man? You just did that in five seconds, man. How you know what I mean? I, I think there's certain properties as well. It's like the fact you've called it Kung Fu isn't going to make me go, I've got to watch it. The thing is, Kung Fu is so old now. That it's exactly. Most exactly. people who aren't us aren't even going to recognize where it comes from. So you could do your own thing, man. You Tying it into what went before makes no difference here. And also what you do by doing that is you make things more difficult for yourself because you do, you then have the people who do remember it who are just will then start just playing the you know playing the comparison game. And I think if your property is so far removed from it, then don't even call it that. Yeah. So you know what I mean, thumb up, thumb well, down, thumb middle. I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a thumb up yeah. <laughs> just because just cuz <'cause... laughs> Because it's a to-do list, man. And I'm always down for some martial arts anyway. Uh, yeah, right. You know what I mean? So if you're going to get flashbacks with her getting trained as well, I'm like, yep, yeah, I'm all good. So long as it ain't, so long as it's not one of these, like, I've been there for six months things, she's got to have been there for years. Right. Uh, you ready? Yep. So this is a classic reimagining. No, come on. When come on. Wait, wait. When... <laughs> is that literally... Is... Are you taking the mic now? These are my words, but it ain't no, it ain't a lie. Okay. <laughs> this is based. Let me skip to the end, and I'll just okay. read half a sentence at the end, half of the last sentence, based on the 1987 cult classic. 1987 cult classic. That could be anything, man. All right, all right. I'll finish the sentence. Okay. Based on the 1987 cult classic that revolutionised how we think about vampires, the Lost Boys. What? When a mother and her Gen Z sons, I don't even know what Gen Z is, man, moved to the seaside town where she grew up, they discovered there's a sinister reason the local cool kids sleep all day, party all night, never grow up and never get old. Family bonds are tested as the brothers find themselves on opposite sides of a mythological struggle. <laughs> tired, man. <laughs> <laughs> I t- I'm sure we've never had a pilot season episode like this before. We're, li- we're like, pr- everything you said is just a reimagining of something else. I know, I know. So and far, that hasn't not, been one. I mean, that's not even to say this is going to be bad, but you're like, come on, man. Something new. Yeah, something new. I, I, we've said this before. We've said this before. You walk through your average bookshop, yeah? There's 2,000 new, <laughs> fresh ideas on the shelves. <laughs> just pick one. <laughs> 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 and then I mean, make it right oh. unlike uh, and then make it right oh, that's foul. yeah but the thing is, and, the, and I think the thing to be, you know the thing we've got to come back to which is why I'll give it a wavering from the thing we've got because I won't dismiss things out of hand because obviously things were cult classics for a reason because they were good first time around mm. you know and that's not to say that all of the shows you just mentioned and this show can't be good shows but if I'm judging things on the basis of, you know, this is a pilot, you know, I like, you know, I, I love when I get a premise. It's like that one you did me back in the day, which didn't turn out to be that great, but it was a show called Whiskey Cavalier. <laughs> yes. You had met the title. The blurb sounded boom. Okay, the show didn't really work out that great. But you know what? That's what a pilot season's for. Yeah, it's supposed also, to be. And, and that wasn't because of the concept. That was because of the execution. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, whereas this is you got nowhere to go and it's kind of like yeah it's a reimagining of kung fu right it's a reimagining of the equalizer right didn't we just do that yeah but it's different now okay <laughs> it's a reimagining of um lost boys wow okay that's going back a little way so how are we going to change up well they're still going to be going to the same town it's going to be two brothers yeah you're giving it a wavering thumb. Which I'm going like, to give it a wavering thumb. Sounds like a martial art discipline. Yeah. A wavering, a wavering thumb. <laughs> please don't start. With, please don't start. With no, this one I thought was in this. This might. This isn't the usual kind of one that I'd sort of jump at. Is that because you're struggling? Because <laughs> I'm, str- I'm struggling. <laughs> it's called Maverick. Okay. In present day America, that finds itself under authoritarian rule, the president, the president's daughter, raised to believe her father is moral and benevolent, has her worldview rocked on her first day at Georgetown. Challenged by her fellow students and under the watchful eye of secret service agents, she'll have to decide if her loyalties lie with her family or with a growing resistance as she navigates her freshman year. I think I was just brought in by the word resistance. Mm-hmm. I do, mm-hmm. I do love a resistance movement. Do you know what yeah. I mean? 
Um, does, that, does that grab you at all? I actually quite like the sound of that. Mm. I, I think it, it that has the potential to go soap opera pretty quickly. But yeah. yeah. I quite like the sound of that. And certainly compared to the reimaginings, I was just grateful to not hear something was a reimagining of something. Yeah. Okay. So, was that a waving thumb or a full thumb? <sighs> I don't think the premise was was interesting enough for me to give it a full uh, different yeah. enough. Yeah. So I'm still I'm still going with wavering thumb. I'm with you there. Uh right. This is a classic reimagining. <laughs> <laughs> and it is it actually is but you probably know about this one. Oh. Follow the this follows the world's most famous superhero and comics book's most famous journalist as they deal with all the stress, pressures and complexities that come with being working parents in today's society. Superman and Lois. Yes, I did know this one. <clears throat> I don't know why they would... If they, is you saying classic reimagining? No, I'm saying it. Because, okay. Because like, I, I used to like <laughs> Superman and Lois. Oh, it was I mean, called like, Clark and Lois, Lois, Lois and Lois Clark. And Clark yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, the same thing really, isn't it? But with a kid. I'm giving that a thumbs up on the basis that if it's done right, that could be great. It's CW, so we'll probably have a great first season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll get a second season where they just add super friends. Yeah. Do but I, I, I'm giving it a thumbs up because I'm curious to see how they do that kind of family thing. Yeah. Yeah. I find I do find that quite interesting. So, uh, do you know what CW series? I'll always give them because I remember that first season of Arrow. Loved it. First season yeah. of Flash. Loved it. Um, you know, first season of um, Legends was batshit crazy. <laughs> loved it. So I'll I'll give them a go. But um, yeah, yeah. The minute they start falling into the usual CW tra- uh, traps, I'm out. Yeah, it'd be Today. interesting to see how. And I like the guy, Tyler Hoach- Hoachley. Yeah, I like him. I, I, like, I like him as well. And I like the um, the woman who plays Lois as well. Yeah. Um, Lois is a dick. Okay. I'm only saying that because I've been reading the comic Lois Lane. She's just rude, man. But I'll come to it. We'll talk about that next week. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> no, yeah. So, I'm, yeah, I'm interested. Um, I'd be interested to see how different or similar it is to the way they do Supergirl. In terms of tone, yeah, yeah. How is that going to work tone wise? I know. I think they need to shift it. Yeah, because I, yeah, because I think they're, they're going to be similar enough as it is. Mm. You know, um, so something needs to be different to set them apart. Otherwise, and I do one I of do, them ain't going to survive. And I do think my first thought was like super a Superman again was my first thought. Yeah. All right, let's move on. This one, and I'm going to quote from the first line of the log line here, a reimagining of the long running series. <sighs> Walker, Texas Ranger. It ain't Walker if it ain't Chuck Norris. It ain't Chuck Norris, but it's called Walker. <sighs> Starring Jared Padalecki. The dude from um, Supernatural. Yeah, from Supernatural. Wow. Yeah, I know. What'd you do with that? I like him. I like him. But I just don't... It centres on Cordell Walker, a widow and father of two with his own moral code, who returns home to Austin after being undercover for two years, only to discover there's harder work to be done at home. He'll attempt to reconnect with his children, navigate clashes with his family, and find unexpected common ground with his new partner, one of the first women in Texas Rangers history, while growing increasingly suspicious about the circumstances surrounding his wife's death. You know what? Let me stop you there. I'm out. Too much, <laughs> too, too much soap opera. There was just, no, because there was just too many. There was just so too many cliches you handed me that, like, I, I didn't even know which one to sort of go. I'm out at. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Was it the dead wife? The conspiracy? You know, yeah, the partner re- reconnecting with your children, reconnecting with your family, going back to your hometown. At least with the Chuck Norris one, literally, you just turned up and ran, ass kicker, man, and it was episode was over. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, All right. I'm out, man. Okay, so I'm down for that one. Yep. Did you ever watch the 100? I started to. I think I watched about half of the first season. Was it any good? Well, you watched half of the first season. No, but I don't think I stopped. I, I just think I had more other things going on, so it just um fell by the wayside. 
But I heard it went a bit, it went sort of batshit crazy. As in, after that first season, it re- I think there were like time jumps as well and all sorts of things mm-hmm. going on. So I, I actually know nothing about it. Okay. But uh, there's a prequel. It's called, it's untitled as yet. It's just called The 100 Prequel, set 97 years before the events mm. of the original series. Uh, so on the apparently it's going to be a planted spin-off, which will air as an episode of the 100's final season. Oh, uh, okay. Starts with the end of the world. <laughs> it's a good start. Yeah, I mean. Nu- nu- nuclear apocalypse that wipes out most of the human population on Earth. The epic adventure follows a band of survivors on the ground as they learn to cope in a dangerous world while fighting to create a new and better society from the ashes of what came before. So it doesn't sound, I mean, it's a hundred years, it's almost a hundred years before that. So it doesn't even sound like it directly impinges on it. It's just set in the same world. Yeah. No, I'll give that a go. I'll okay, give that a go. Cool. Um, untitled Arrow spin-off, which is, we all know is called The Canaries, isn't it? Arrow and the is, Canaries. Is, is it? Yeah, Green Arrow and the Canaries. Green Arrow and the Canaries. Something. Yeah. Did you see the episode of Arrow, which was basically episode one of this? I, I started to, and then I realised that I really wanted to see the actual last episode of Arrow, <laughs> Joey. Yeah. So I actually skipped on and watch the last episode of Arrow. It literally wasn't Arrow. It was literally episode one of, Black, of Green Arrow. And the yeah. Canaries. And I thought I'll come back to that at some stage. Did you watch it? I did. What do you think? I think it's got promise. Okay. I, was, I wasn't, I admit, I wasn't really excited about it at all. But I thought, oh, there's yeah, something there. Okay. So, so what, what, what would you give it then? I, look, I I'm, think, for, go on. I'm giving it, uh, I'm giving it a, a wavering thought, as opposed to like, a wavering middle thumb i'd say a wavering thumbs up right because i'm not i'm not completely sold but i'm curious okay i think for me it it's it will get a middle thumb which is probably wavering towards the down just because i feel like now that green arrow as in oliver queen has kind of left the building i'm kind of less i'm far less invested in mm. anything arrow related and diggle as well now diggle's good as well i'm like not really that interested unless I hear good things and then I might come back into it but you're right normally CW um, shows normally have a fairly decent showing for their first season mm. so maybe but I just feel like yeah well, we'll see and it's it's set in the future yes yeah yeah mm. I knew this yeah Um, but also as well you know the landscape's changed and when Arrow and all that was first going there was nothing it, it had no competition yeah yeah, you know, Daredevil didn't exist. You know, um, mm. I can't believe I was going to say Iron Fist, <laughs> fool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, Daredevil didn't exist. Jessica Jones didn't exist. You know, and the whole host of other shows that we could mention. Um, whereas I feel now it's a much different landscape, and you've got a. I think CW's got a got a good market cornered though. So yeah, yeah we'll they do what they do. So yeah. they'll always have their fans. <clears throat> uh, I'm moving on to NBC. I love this one. (laughs) It's called Young Rock. Is this literally what it says on the tin? Yeah. Inspired by the formative years of Dwayne Johnson. Wow. (laughs) What is he like? Is he like the producer in it or something? He's he's, he's listed listed as producer and cast. (laughs) Fair play. (laughs) And the thing is, I always said like... Dwayne Johnson is one of those people who could literally make me watch any shit if he's in it. Like, oh, that sounds shit. Uh, the Rock's in it. Oh, okay, I'll oh, give it a go. Oh, give it a go, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wonder if it's be one of those shows where they will get, like you say, um, a young a young actor or something to play him and then he'll kind of narrate over it, like yeah, one of the years style. That, that's what I was wondering. Like, everybody hates Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, is it, gonna, is it a comedy? Mate. It don't say that's all it says. <laughs> that's literally all it says. Okay, no, it's in the NBC comedy section. So yeah, okay. I guess it okay. is. So, <laughs> literally all it says is inspired by the formative years of Dwayne Johnson. I was like, camera. he just walked into like a meeting and just go, yeah, I want a show about me, about a young version of me. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, then Dwayne, if you give it any thought, how's it going to work out what right now? It just needs to be about me, get it done. He's <laughs> 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 I don't want Kevin Hart in it. Joey, just uh, get it done. Joey. Oh, dear. Wow. I don't... <laughs> okay, we're nearing the end now. Okay, that's good, because um, it's, it's... Right, NBC drama, Debris. 
Two agents from two different continents and two different mindsets must work together to investigate when wreckage from a destroyed alien spacecraft has mysterious effects on humankind. Hey, at last. At last. Yeah, NBC. Look, I've got a couple more, yeah? I think NBC are bringing it. All right, all right. So, uh, That's a thumbs up, by the way. Okay, cool. Echo. A high-concept genre procedural revolving around a team of investigators who solved the highest-profile crimes by sending our heroes 36 hours into the past in the body of the victim. They assume, <laughs> the, vi- they assume the victim's identity and must race against time to prevent the crime before it happens. <laughs> now we're talking, man. Now we're, now we're back talking. in the room. Now yeah, we're exactly. talking, man. Right. Now we're talking. I actually thought we were going to have to quit GS. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. them's dying, man. What happened? All right, you ready? All I'm right. taking that's a thumbs up. Yeah, that's, a, that's two thumbs up, man. All right, La Bria. Okay. When a massive sinkhole mysteriously opens in Los Angeles, it tears a family in half, separating mother and son from father and daughter. When part of the family find themselves in an unexplainable primeval world alongside a disparate group of strangers, they must work to survive and uncover the mystery of where they are and if there is a way back home. Oh, so my mouth was open, man. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what that made me think? Of? Do you remember that game we played that was based, and they made a book out of it, and it was basically the world shattered time wise. Yes. And um, the rea- was it Reality Wars or something like that? Oh, no, I can't remember. It was so long ago when we it were but children. Different. It was all yeah. different realities. Um, possibility Wars. No, it wasn't even called that. It uh, that was what the series was. This, that, that's what the overall overarching was, was it? it. Was it Storm Knights or something? Oh man, Tog, Tog, that Tog. Was it. Tog. That's Tog. it. Tog. Possibility Wars. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And they had a bunch of books about it, and it was just different time periods. Like, you know, you'd walk through Los Angeles, and for example, and you'd walk across a boundary, and suddenly you're in like 18th century London, or it was just, and there, and there was, were alien was like, worlds as well. There was a pulp world as well, weren't there? The yeah, Nile Empire, I think it was called. Yeah, that's right, that's right. It just right. made me think of that. But yeah, yeah. So, so again, what, what are you giving me? Yeah, that's thumbs, man. That's thumbs up. All right, all right, all right. Um, Langdon. Oh, this is based on a Dan Brown book. Oh, this is... The Lost... <laughs> the Lost... <laughs> <laughs> I've got prejudice, man. I'll be honest. Let it play out, man. Let, oh, it, play. let it play out. Based on Dan Brown's best-selling thriller, The Lost Symbol, the series follows the early adventures of famed Harvard symbologist Robert Langdon, who must solve a series of deadly puzzles to save his kidnapped mentor and thwart a chilling global conspiracy. Right. Take the Dan Brown out of the equation. Right. That, you just, you that just sounds look... right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so it's just like, it's like, I never get his hair, man. Was it? Anyway. Yeah, we won't go back. You know, there's, a, there's an episode way back in GS history that has my long, <laughs> explains my long term Dan Brown's work, having only read one of his books. But there you go. All right. This is the last one. And what do you say? You giving that? A, where's, where's it for the? Yeah, that's a, that's a thumbs up, man. That's a thumbs All right. up. Ordinary Joe. It's about a guy called Joe. It, this show explores explores the three parallel lives of the show's main character after he makes a pivotal choice at a crossroads in his life. The series asks the question of how different life might look if you made your decision based on love, loyalty, or passion. Ooh, yeah. However, that still has soap opera written all over it. Really it does. But what I find interesting is so uh, we just got crazy about uh, or interested or whatever. NBC. One, two, three, four, yeah. five, six. I gave you six. Uh, there's six in NBC drama. There were six offerings and we found mm. one, two, three, four, five of them interesting. Yeah. The rest of the rest of you TV station should be ashamed of yourselves. Man. Yeah, shame. Funnily enough, we spent more time on the ones that we were disappointed for. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the way? Yeah. Plus, so, obviously, we've still got um, Disney Plus have got a lot of, you should, a lot yeah, of the Marvel yeah, shows coming yeah. in. Okay? Yeah. So we'll have a look at that at some point. Mm-hmm. But there you go. Yep. <laughs> and there's some I didn't even mention. <laughs> There's one, I can't remember what it's called, it doesn't even matter. 
But all it says is, oh yeah, ensemble comedy about black people dating and wine. <laughs> What's it called? Black people and wine. It ain't, it ain't titled yet. That's probably what the working title was. Bro- Brothers and booze. <laughs> <laughs> actually, that actually works. Probably, yeah, I know. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> that's how this podcast started. <laughs> yeah, sure. we should retire ourselves. <laughs> Brothers and booze episodes. And booze. <laughs> yeah. So let us know which shows you're looking forward to in the upcoming season. If there's any that we haven't heard of, let us know. Just let not us... classic reimagining ones. If you've yeah. heard of any new ones of those, yeah. don't, I don't need to know. Don't need to know. Don't so know. you know how to find us. The, you can check out the website, uh, geeksindicate.co.uk. You can email us at the geeks at geeksindicate.co.uk. Check out our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram. Yeah. Um, so until next time. Geek Syndicate, we out. We out.